So knee pain that occurs when hiking or walking can be due to muscle imbalances and this could be especially true if you haven't had any accident or injuries that would explain the pain that you're having in your knee. So if there isn't some obvious reason for your pain and you only have knee pain when you're kind of stepping up and stepping down, then it's likely that you have a very specific issue that occurs when small but very important muscles around the hips become weak, meaning they can no longer control the way the knee moves. And over the last year, I've been working with a lot of hikers and mountaineers that have had this issue, and it's difficult to treat because it's very different for every individual person. Having said that, there's things that everyone can do no matter what their individual situation, and generally there's two different approaches to solving knee pain. And it's not icing your knee, it's not resting, it's not surgery or anything like that. It's simple things that you can implement now right away to help solve your knee pain. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Chase. I'm a strength coach as well as a super keen hiker. And in this video, I'm going to be going through a couple of things that can help you with your knee pain, some techniques, some tips, some things to test out to see if we can help you with your knee pain. So that, like I said, there's two approaches here. There's the quick fix and then there's the long-term approach, which really gets into treating the cause of the knee pain. Right now, we're going to look at the quick fix because who doesn't love that? The long-term or permanent fix we're going to go through later. So the quick fix is simply to reduce the amount of load that's going through the joint. And there's four different ways that you can do that. Firstly, steep trails put a lot of stress through our knee joints. So the first thing you can do is choose less steep trails. We experience three to four times the amount of force on the downhill compared to when we're walking on the flat, which is why for most of you, going downhill is probably where the pain is most significant. And if you're lucky enough to be out in open country like this, what you can do is just zigzag on the way down. That's obviously going to reduce the amount of steep terrain that you're walking on and it's going to lessen the amount of load going through the joint rather than taking those big steps down which is probably causing you a lot of knee pain. The second thing you can do to reduce the load going through the joint is to carry less things in your backpack. So if you've got a friendly hiking buddy who is capable of carrying a little bit extra, maybe you can pass a few things off to him or her so that we're lessening the load that you have to carry and therefore lessening the load that's going through the joint. And obviously the same thing occurs with your own body weight. The lighter you are, the less stress are going through the joints. So Obviously losing a little bit of weight is going to help with that, although that's not necessarily the best answer for everyone. The third thing we can do to minimize the load going through the joint is to use trekking poles. I've got several videos on how to use trekking poles both up and downhill. I'm gonna cover a little bit more in this video. But if you've got knee pain and you still aren't using trekking poles, and I think it's really something that you should look into. The main way they help is simply by using your upper body to distribute some of that load from your body and your backpack away from the knees and into your hands. So if you're using a technique that I'm gonna show you in this video, you should be reducing a little bit of the load that's going through the joint from every single step. And that goes a long way to just making those small differences over a long day of hiking. Okay, so using trekking poles downhill, what I tend to do is the overhand technique, and we don't even need the strap. I'm using a trail running pole here, so it doesn't really matter. We place the palm over the top of the, or the end of the pole, and we're placing that into the ground nice and wide. So keep in mind, we still wanna have, you know, the knees bent, uh, the hips back, all the systems are the same, but we're just introducing the poles to take some of the loading off the knee. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So yes, uh, it does look quite stupid, but hey, if it solves your pain, <laughs> all the better for it. So knees bent, hips back, and we're just kind of going quite wide with the poles, hands over the top, and all that's doing is really just kind of just putting the brakes on. The fourth thing you can do is to spread the load of your body and your backpack through the other joints to help mitigate that stress. So we want to bend your knees, we want to keep your hips bent as well on the downhill by using this technique. Now it looks a little bit weird and it takes a little bit of getting used to, but it works because it takes a lot of that force away from the knee and onto the other muscles like the quadriceps. We wanna get the glutes working, the glute med in particular, which is really um, the main muscle that's responsible for the way that the knee tracks. We want to get your calves involved and we want to just gently heel strike first and we want to kind of roll over the feet and keep your hips super stable 
as you move down. It's much kinder on joints doing this technique rather than coming down with straighter knees, slamming your feet into the ground and sending all that shock up through these joints. Your knees and your hips are natural shock absorbers if you use them correctly. So all this talk of activating muscles brings me to the actual solution, which is the real meat of this video. And it really comes down to activating muscles that are asleep and they've been atrophied. Those muscles aren't being used because most of us sit for the vast majority of the day. So what we need to do is to start activating those muscles. We need to start using them again. We need to get that butt working so that it can help control the hips and control the direction of the knee and help spread that load over the joint. Because while many people think that their knee pain is coming from like bone on bone action or cartilage that's been disrupted in the knee, a lot of time it's simply muscle imbalances. When you look at athletes such as like football players who have had you know multiple knee reconstructions and they have strength coaches and physical therapists to help engage all the musculature around the hips and the knees, they're fine. They're able to play and perform really well because they're doing that strength training. But when these guys retire, they stop doing the strength training, the muscles start to atrophy again and that knee pain becomes so much more severe even though they're not doing that high impact activity. So it's really important that we're working, engaging those muscles, keeping them active, keeping the blood going through them and training them on a regular basis in order to help prevent our knee pain. And you don't need to be doing, you know, squatting 100 kilos. It's just a matter of doing simple bodyweight exercises that you can do on the floor in your own home. So the actual long-term solution is not medication. It's not rest, ice, compression, and it's not just stopping the hiking that you love doing. The real solution is more movement. We need to build strength and mobility and stability around your hips, which will lead to a stronger, more stable, and ultimately pain-free knee. So right now, what we're gonna do is go through some of the most important exercises that use no equipment and give you the best bang for buck in terms of time and effort that you're putting in with your strength training to help solve your problem. Let's go and have a look at those. Okay, so this is the one leg balance and it's not just as simple as lifting one leg up off the ground. Like I said, the ankle, knee and hip are all in communication. So we need to do this very slowly and we need to focus. So firstly, we're gonna do this barefoot. We're gonna grip the toes with the ground. We're gonna lock the knee out. We're gonna stand nice and tall, elongate as much as possible, and then throw all of your weight onto one leg without lifting this leg off the floor. Once you're confident that you've got most of your weight on that foot, then we come up. And the idea is that we bring the knee up to about hip height. Now, a couple of things that you're looking for here. One, does the hip, sway out to the left or to the right, that will indicate a muscle imbalance probably in the glute med. The other thing is, does the upper body need to compensate either to the left or the right when this knee comes up off the ground? So that's a couple of things you need to look for in this movement. Apart from that, what we wanna do is really focus on keeping that knee locked out feeling the actual the glute med muscle to see if it's engaging while we're balancing here and beginning to spend more time in this position and just become comfortable. One of the other benefits of this exercise is that we are building stability and we're building balance whilst we're just standing in this position. And this is something you can do while you're brushing your teeth. It's a pretty easy exercise. So if you notice that when you do this movement, the hips sag out to one side, or if you see the upper body compensating, leaning over, then that's a pretty good indication that we're on the right track. There might be uh, a weakness in the glute med. It may not be activating that muscle. And if that is the case, then that's good news that we know that the glute med is weak and we know how to fix it. So that's the first exercise. The second exercise is actually going to strengthen the glute med. So our number one glute med strengthening exercise, we're gonna do lying on our side. It's called a side lying hip abduction. As the name suggests, we're going to abduct the hip. Now that just means we're lifting the heel up here. So we're gonna come up to about a 45 degree angle and we're gonna perform a few reps to see if we can get the glute med activated. So you should really feel it on the outside of the butt here. 
Now, a couple of things that are quite complex when it comes to this movement. We want to make sure that the toe is pointing down and that way we tend to get more glute med activation. We also want to make sure that the hips are basically stacked one on top of the other. We don't want to be rolling backwards, so you're moving towards your back, nor do you want to be too far forward. You want to find that nice balance point that enables you to just support your head and really focus on the abduction movement. So rather than giving you a rep range to work with with this exercise, I encourage you just to go to form failure. And what that's going to do is to help you realize and really pay attention to when your form fails. So form failure in this exercise would be not being able to get up to that height of the 45 degree angle or noticing that your hips roll out or roll in or maybe you're not able to keep the knee straight. That would be three examples of form failure. So these are really my top two exercises that I prescribe almost immediately when I'm talking to one of my clients that has knee pain. And what I end up doing from this point is working with them on an individual level to find out where they're strong and where they're weak. Having said that, the second best option is to just strengthen everything. And I have developed a program called Hike Strong, which is based around body weight movements that are simple, that allow you to do them at home frequently to engage those muscles, to strengthen everything. So we're really mitigating any problems, not just knees, but also hips, you know, things to prevent ankle injuries. Hike Strong really takes a very broad approach at strengthening absolutely everything. So it really is my new core offering in terms of my programs to help you solve these problems, to get you strong and to keep you going in the mountains and enjoying the mountains for the rest of your life. And guys, the main reason that I do this is to educate myself and my clients because I want to be out enjoying the mountains when I'm like 70, 80 and 90. This is about longevity for me. I'm not necessarily one of those guys that's you know, pushing the limits and doing crazy stuff out in the mountains. I just really like spending time out here and I want to be able to continue to do that for the rest of my life. And if you share that philosophy as well, then I think Hike Strong would be the perfect program for you. As I'll leave you with that. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments section below. And uh, I'm going to go for a little wander in the mountains. I'll see you on the summit.